G'day guys, Mac with the Outer Circle, and today, I don't really know at the time of recording what I'm going to call this video, uh, perhaps some reflections on Games Workshop currently, something like that, but, so there are a few things I want to talk about, I want to talk about what I think is the absolute worst thing the company is doing, but I also want to talk about some things I think they've done really well, and sort of the good ground in between, because obviously on this channel, well, we shit on Games Workshop a lot, and I think deservedly so the majority of the time. There are definitely times where I probably overstep the mark, I'll admit to that, but if I can admit to that, surely some people can also admit that we'd probably hit the nail on the head more often than not. So, uh, apologies if you hear some weird clicking or clicking noises in the background, both uh, Willow and Hunter are in the room with me right now, my GSPs, uh, and Fat boy, Big Chungus here, he uh, got into the pantry the other day and ate a whole tub of gravy. And he just hasn't been the same since the fat little shit. But anyway, on with the show. So, first of all, let's look at the different systems. We'll kind of describe the place I think they're at uh, and what I think is good about them. So, Warhammer Fantasy. It's good that they're doing a Cities of Sigma thing, which has some sort of focus on the older factions. But it's really just a half-assed book. It's not the older factions being bought, black, uh, bought back in all of their glory, as it were. Um, this is just the stuff they want to keep into production. Me, personally, huge Bretonian fan. Always wanted to build a Bretonian army, but... By the time I got financially well off enough to do it, uh, it was the end times of Warhammer Fantasy. And I was like, well, I I don't like the direction end times is going in, so I'll sit it out until 9th edition, which of course didn't happen. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, the state of things, it's good there is some support for those older factions, true, but it's still not in what I'd call a great place. As for Age of Sigmar itself, it is great to see they're doing a lot of releases for it. Usually one big release every, I'd say, six months currently. Uh, there have been some fantastic, fantastic things done. I, I really like what they did with the Night Haunt. Uh, me personally, this ticked all the right boxes. This is the sort of faction that I absolutely love. And I just did a video on it probably, well, pretty much when they released it. And it was all about just how great it is, um, how it reminds me of uh, like a night on Bald Mountain, the Fantasia story, and that kind of thing, and how, yeah, how it just ticked all the right boxes. Of course, there are some that are a bit of a miss. Uh, when I think of ones that are a bit of a miss, uh, the Adon of the Deepkin, uh, very much a miss for me, because uh, they are, <laughs> they're dumb. <laughs> to me personally, some people might really like the fluff and the stories that go with it. I am definitely not that person. So, Adonis Deepkin, not a win. Uh, what else? What else? Okay. Uh, things like the Fire Slayers, really like them. Caradon Overlords, uh, like the Adonis Deepkin, not a huge fan of them. But it is cool to see Games Workshop sort of expanding out of the, I guess you'd call it Tolkien esque. Uh, sort of world that said there are factions like say the chaos dwarves which were kind of unique to games workshop these dwarves who could use magic but it would turn them to stone and stuff that was kind of interesting uh it's a pity they don't exist in age of sigma they haven't done anything with it it would be a really great way of adding to chaos without having to go down a god route um that's a good thing of course you've got the gloom spike gits which is just night goblins but, you know, they've tried to do something unique with it. To me, personally, these are very Warcrafty. The sculpts, uh, things like the Dankhold, Trogoth. Uh, these trolls went from, like, the old menacing trolls in, like, 20 years ago, 25 years ago in Warhammer Fantasy to sort of a cartoonish children's interpretation of a troll. Not that there's anything wrong with that. It's just interesting to note the direction it's gone in. Uh, it's probably done for the fact they want to try and get more kids into the hobby. That's fine. All for it. Um, on the whole, yeah, I don't mind the release. Um, they obviously dial up all the aspects and features of a particular faction to 11 now. 
in order to help with like the copyright and to really make them stand out. Not necessarily my cup of tea, but again, don't hate it either. So all in all, Age of Sigmar, it's getting good support, reasonable amount of figures coming into place. Um, the things that do need improving are some, some more of that support for the older factions, bringing back those older factions like Bretonians. Uh, personally, uh, they are doing something with like a, a not Tomb Kings faction. Uh, interesting to see what goes on with that. Um, and of course, because the game's now had a few years to mature, it's not the absolute shit show that I think we can all admit it was on release, where it was just a one-page booklet, basically, with no thought put into it, designed for maximum copyright, and to try and rejig, uh, I won't say a dying game, I think a stagnant game is a better way of looking at what Warhammer Fantasy Battles was. Uh, and the reasons, of course, that happened are something we're not going to go into in this video. But yeah, I'd say Age of Sigma, pretty good place, and also probably one of the better communities. So let's move on to 40k. Well, they're getting lots of releases. Chaos is getting stuff. Uh, I have the same problems really with 40k that I've had for probably a good six, seven years, which is okay you're releasing things for say Eldar or Chaos but you're releasing a lot more things for the Space Marines and the Space Marines are sort of getting the better deal out of it um, things like Cave and Shrike aside which are just terrible models overall the models are in a pretty good direction I'd say there's more good Primaris than bad and some of the reimaginings of existing characters such as uh, Kosara Khan for example, uh, fantastic. Uh, definitely knocked it out of the park with Corsair Khan, just putting that out there. Um, so that's, you know, that's good to see. Um, what's bad about it? Well, there's way too many rule books coming out way too fast. Uh, things like the, things like the, how put this? Space Marine Codex, we've had what? An index, a codex, chapter approved, a codex. That's at least four different rule books in the space of what, three years of 40K? We used to get at least four years uh, between different editions of Warhammer, if not five or six years, depending. So this is not a good time frame, and especially when we are having to pay for said books. This, more than anything, is one of the big factors in making a person like me not want to get into this game, and is a huge limiting factor for the new blood of wanting to get into 40k. Now, as I said, overall, it is good to see they're doing things, uh, doing lots of releases, but you also have to notice that, okay, Eldar, what releases have they had? Not many. The last big release for them was they got their own uh, triumvirate at the sort of end of Warhammer 7th uh, edition and then they got nothing since now there's new aspect warriors coming fan fucking tastic it's about time in fact <laughs> probably about 10 years late if I'm honest uh, and it's something I've harped on a lot uh, about them needing to do so great to see but it is late but it is an improvement so <laughs> um, that kind of thing's good to see what about Necrons? Again, not a lot coming out there. Tau, not a lot coming out there. They've had a couple of things, but even like the basic Fire Warrior and Crute models, they're the original releases that came out back in 2002 uh, off the top of my head. So not really a lot being done there. Just a bit of repackaging, slight reimagining on the Fire Warriors, I suppose. They did get reboxed uh, in a different spruce setup. But, uh, so I am being a little disingenuous, I suppose. Uh, you'll notice that when it comes to the armies, the armies are actually divided up into things like the different chapters, Blood Angels, Dark Angels, of course Death Watch and Grey Knights are separate to that, but you've got your Iron Hands, Raven Guards, Salamanders. When you go to Chaos, on the other hand, Death Guard and Thousand Suns, and then it's just Chaos Space Marines. You need to be investing the same amount into the Legions as you do into the chapters, and this has been a massive, massive gripe of mine for many editions. I think it can be argued that support for 
a new range of corn berserkers, a new range of noise marines, would mean far more to more players than support of an army that I play myself, like White Scars or Iron Hands. Cool as those factions are, and as easy as it is to bring out just a set of shoulders for them and a couple of characters, they're really just minor sub-factions in the scheme of things, and they're represented well by the models that exist. The Chaos Space Marine Legions, on the other hand, are not well represented by the models that exist. The standard Chaos Space Marine equivalent of a Tactical Marine, for example, whilst a lovely new kit looks good, um, let's look at the kit now because I can. Whilst this is a great kit, looks good, this does not scream of any of the Legions. This is not Slanesh. This is not Corn Warship. This isn't even something like Night Wards. You know, Night Wards should have skull helmets and that kind of thing. And whilst, yes, you can say to me, you can go to Forge World and buy all these upgrade things, why the fuck should I have to when the Loyalist Space Marines get all these things for themselves? You know? Uh, it's not exactly what I would call fair. Uh, the Adeptus Custodes, I think they've finally petered out with their releases for them. Uh, one of the big things I have noticed is they're not going to bring out many vehicles anymore. It used to be when a codex would come out, you might get three or four like, tanks or tank variants available. Now you get like one vehicle. And frankly, the grab vehicles of the Space Marine are just overgunned monstrosities um, that I dislike. Uh, overall though, I think 40k is in a moderately good place. I just think they need to really ramp up the quality control so that they're not day one FAQing their fucking codexes. That's probably the biggest thing. Uh, and also keeping the books around a little bit longer so they're not completely invalidated within a year of purchase. Uh, because you cannot charge that much for something that is invalidated so quickly in my opinion. Uh, in fact, fuck, it's not my opinion, that's a fact. Uh, let's not hide behind words here. A codex should last you for three to four fucking years. And Codex Power Creep should not be a thing either, but Games Workshop does it deliberately because they know it sells and they figured that out back in the Matt Ward days. Fuck it, I said it. You all know it's true, so don't whinge about it in the comments. Um, yeah, 40k, it's, eh, it's an okay spot. Just fix those couple of things and you'll be doing well and focus less on the Primaris. Alright, Middle Earth. Um... There is something funny about releasing glow in the dark dice because you can't play the fucking game in the dark so what's the novelty of having the glow in the dark dice but anyway actual things to say about it uh it is good to see that they're finally giving a shit about the game for a very long time they did not care and did not put any effort into the lord of the rings and they basically let the game die the community kept it alive and they hate it when i mentioned it i did a what broke the fans ages back probably the most downvoted video in this channel. And I didn't even say anything particularly controversial. I said a lot of controversial things on 40k videos. When I did the Hobbit one, I was like, yeah, the game is, you know, not supported by the company. And the people were like, the game is well loved and loved. The sound of them gobbling fucking cocks. So, what do I think? Well, as I say, it's, it's in a better place. Now, they're working on sort of Rohan stuff at the moment, things like that. Um, terrain is kind of a thing, but they need to decide what the real focus of the game is. And they seem to originally have started with a small skirmish game in the Fellowship of the Ring. And then when they brought out the two towers, they were like, okay, let's replicate some of these bigger battles. Uh, that really began with the Last Alliance battles that were released in White Dwarf back in about 2001. Uh, they, they released like, the Sauron miniature and they did a whole thing on it. Neither here nor there. They need to decide though what kind of size game this is. Because right now, it's like they want it to be big battles, but it's kind of still a skirmish game. It's not really the best of both worlds. Uh, Again, this could be mitigated by bringing back something like the, I believe it was, was it War of the Ring? Uh, fuck, I'm, I'm showing my stupidity right now because I've clean forgotten what it was called. But basically they, they actually had a rank and file version of War of the Rings you could play. 
are designed to replicate those big battles like the Siege of Minas Tirith, that kind of thing. And right now, I, let's say I'll get this box here. Uh, I was looking for the starter box. Apologies while I bring it up on screen. Start here. Okay. So this starter box here would have been considered pretty much all you would have needed <laughs> uh, 20 years ago if you were first getting into this game. It was, geez, it is nearly 20 years ago. Say 18, 19, I think it was the end of the year 2000 when the Lord of the Rings came out uh, as its own strategy battle game. And I still think it has probably Games Workshop's best large game rule set of all. Um, but anyway, so here it is. That's what back then you would call a really decent force because it has the troll already in it, it has the ring wraith in it. Um, they're normally things you'd be buying separate to add to your regular standard guys that you would get. Same thing like the Rohan. The original Rohan force was that many cavalry, no captains or anything like that. And the other side it got, I think it was 24 Uruk high, and that was the two towers starter set. This is a massive step up from that. It's also twice the cost, but it doesn't matter. These would be considered really great ready to go armies, probably about three times the content, if I'm honest, which actually kind of makes it a steal if I'm being generous to Games Workshop. But the thing is, that's an unwieldy amount of miniatures with the real sense of the game. Not to say it's bad, unplayable, anything like that. As I said, I think it's still one of the better rule sets. But it doesn't mean it can't be improved. Overall, I do like it. I do like they're giving support to the system, but by God, you need to stop painting the miniatures the way you do at Forge World, because let's just go have a look at some of these Middle Earth miniatures for a moment, if I may digress. Uh, character series, maybe? No. The Lord of the Rings versus Tirith. Let's look at the Wardens of Gondor as a great example. Look at the eyes on this guy. Now, I get it, painting eyes is hard. I myself have found that difficult at times. Um, also, the blending here is atrocious. But if you look at the actual uh, resin version of the model, you'll see it's very different to the way it's being painted. Uh, essentially, it looks like he has painted a lot more of the eye than you're meant to, giving us this very interesting gaze. Yeah, you need to do something about the way you paint your models. Uh, not saying this isn't a very skilled artist by any means. I don't mean to shit on the artist himself. The work is good, um, but if it's going to be put on public display like this, you're going to be critical of it, and frankly, I mean, the face like this, ugh. or uh, Eolas, who we originally thought might have been Beragond, I mean, his eyes aren't even the same fucking street, not even the same postcode to each other on the actual painted model. I mean, look at the eyes. One of them is literally a whole eyeball higher than the other. I don't know if that's a fault of the sculpt or what. Uh, yeah. Anyway, that's that's <laughs> that's atrocious. Uh, all right, box games, box games. So there are a fucking lot of box games. Honestly, this is the place where Games Workshop's falling down the fucking most because their whole mentality is doesn't matter if everyone buys it as long as some people buy it that's why they're flooding the market with boxes that's fine the support is not lasting long enough for the games these games are too expensive to get invested in to get too little support and with things like uh shakespeare underworlds whatever the different versions are beast grave are up to now these games are also having things that get, not only are they not supported, they don't make the kits for it anymore, but then they're removing certain rules from circulation or warbands from circulation, and there's no way of sort of getting new cards or anything like that without spending more fucking money. That is terrible. That is absolutely atrocious to the customer. 
and he's honestly the worst thing they're doing as a company. Like, you can live with the prices. I think we've all demonstrated that there's definitely a threshold of prices we're willing to put up with. You can live with their prices, but you cannot live with them saying, you can't use this anymore when it may be a very significant purchase or amount of purchases you've made. Now, a person might not think this is significant, but then what if you played something like Space Marines? And again, this is a totally out there suggestion. A very bad example, some might even say, because there's always one person who likes to come on this channel and say my analogies are terrible, but what if they turned around and said, we're no longer going to support Space Marines and your codex is being withdrawn for balance reasons. What would people with Space Marine armies do? Now, obviously it wouldn't happen, but I guarantee there'd be a lot of reing going on from people because they'd be like, this is fucking bullshit. I spent however much money over however much time invested in this. And if the community, who well, I'm going to take a swing at here, then turned around to them and said, yeah, well, you know... It doesn't matter if you can't use it in competitive play, you can still use it at home. Is that any consolation? I dare say it would not be. Also, I dare say it would probably be okay to hit the people who suggested that, but it's neither here nor there, you know. Not suggesting physical violence is okay, except in this matter. It's not a great situation. And frankly, yeah, Games Workshop trying to make a collectible card game but actually has physical models attached to it and then trying to have the exploitative mechanisms of two completely different systems mashed together. It's like a human centipede. It's an ungodly fucking creation. Shouldn't exist. I think the whole idea of Warhammer Underworlds is one of their better ideas and back in the Shades by a release period, I was like, this is really good. This is not currently really good. I do think the warbands are cool. I think the community's getting pretty toxic because the fact that it's kind of like a Magic the Gathering seems to be pulling in a lot of the Magic the Gathering type fucking mindsets. People who are way too competitive for something so fucking trivial. It's probably the nicest way I can put it. Um, there's a lot of deck building and such going on and collecting all the cards from all the different boxes to build the best possible shouldn't be like that. It should be more like the Chronicles of Hate, or Cool Mini or Not, which you can currently read back. It is expensive though, on the Kickstarter page. Um, it should be more like that, where your warband is your warband with its cards set in stone. You don't just go around picking the best fucking cards of other warbands and playing. I'm sorry, but it's much easier to balance for a start. Uh, and of course, second thing is you don't have to say, well, you can only use this every so many years. The reason they have to say you can't use this anymore is because people come up with these decks which are just ungodly strong and it actually stagnates the meta. Because instead of every warband being viable to some degree, you get a specific warband with a specific set of cards which is so fucking strong, you may as well not bother playing anything else. And that's something that kills entire game systems. Things like... Uh, Matt Ward's Grey Knights, Blood Angels, and Necrons at the end of uh, 5th edition 40k basically killed one of the best editions of 40k ever. Because it basically meant if you were any other army, except maybe Dark Elder, you were fucked. Because you just could not compete with those factions. And same sort of thing here. You can make really well balanced forces against each other with really well balanced cards and have a really fun balanced board game. And I'm not talking perfect balance, I'm talking close enough that it may as well be called balance. Because there's always, again, that smart ass in the comments like, perfect balance is impossible to achieve, you can't even get perfect balance in chair. Fuck that person. Every time there's one. It's just got to be close enough that we know you gave a shit. That's all. So, that's the worst of the specialist games. Um, treatment wise, I mean, I love the miniatures and the fact that price-wise it's one of the cheaper things to get into, I, I think it's great. Uh, Warcry, I think it's too niche, but the models are cool as shit. Aeronautica Imperialis, fuck it, give them Battlefleet Gothic. If you're going to do Imperialis, just go all out and just make Epic. You've got the Titans, you know, in Titanicus, just, just make Epic. 
Uh, yeah, Warcry, beautiful models too niche. Alright, Necromunda, next on my shit on list. The releases are coming at an okay interval, uh, but the rules are terribly laid out in the books. The editing is atrocious. Things are not laid out in a logical order and you have to flick back and forth way too much in these books. That's my biggest gripe on Necromunda. As a whole though, enjoyable game. Blood Bowl, probably, probably the best community out of all Warhammer, uh, of all kinds, because they seem to take it the least serious. And I think it might have something to do with the tone of the world, maybe, the fact that it's not taking itself seriously. But I never have seen super hyper competitive neckbeards playing Blood Bowl. Probably because it has such a fuck you random chance factor to it, it doesn't really play up to your strategies of being a fuck you player. Which is a good thing. Which is a good thing. Um, of course, there will always be exceptions to the rule. Uh, Kill Team? I don't understand why Kill Team and Necromunda aren't just the same game system at this point. Uh, yes, I get it. Different rule sets, different use of miniatures. But you may as well just set the two games side by side and just have like sub variants of the game would be better probably because uh, it'd be cool as shit to have like some kill team tower or something rock up in a necromunda match just saying titanicus titanicus well, let's have a look at titanicus actually this one i want to look into a little bit more while we're here so let's look at or Adeptus Titanicus, and I'm going to do the same thing over at uh, Forge World. So, what have we got? Forge World, a couple of weapons options for a warlord, uh, some realm of battle tiles, and a couple of Reaver weapon options. Well, the realm of battle tiles are probably not going to sell super well, uh, and because I'm fucking Jesus, look at that price. Um, yeah, any. <laughs> Sorry, that was just shockingly expensive for a couple of tiles. Uh, Forger doesn't like to keep Realm of Battle tiles in circulation. They just pulled Zonal Towers from production, which goes to show. And frankly, 3D printing can achieve everything you're seeing right now at a fraction of the cost. Uh, Ryan Kimmel, go look at his Battletech tables and give you some idea. He'll gladly show you some of the crazy shit he's come up with, or, well, other people have come up with that he employs. Uh, at Games Workshop as a whole, uh, let's go for you all. So obviously the Grandmaster Edition, gone. Overpriced as fuck, but it's gone. Now you have to buy everything in these separate little bundles. So the fact that the Grandmaster is gone is symptomatic of, again, that biggest problem, which is the way they sort of do limited time releases now. And the content you pick up today might not exist tomorrow. It is a terrible business model. And I don't know why anyone cuts them slack for it. Because it is worse than the fucking penny pinching. If you want to get into this game now, how long is this Adeptus Titanicus Reaver Battle Command Terminal Pack going to be in production for? Well, it's got last chance to buy on it. So you don't want to fucking miss it. Um, you don't know. What about the amount of models? So we know this game came out uh, over a year ago now. We have a War Titan, a Reva Titan, a Knight Periphon, some Serastus Knight Lancers. We've got a Warhound, and that's it. So in one year's content, we have two different types of Knight. We've also got, well, we have the other Plastic Knights, I think that came out in the Grandmaster. I'm sure we had Errant's Paladin somewhere. They might have been 3D printed. Maybe I'm dreaming of the one. Oh no, they're there at the bottom. Sold out. Um, they do limited runs now of basically 10,000. They make 10,000, say, um, boxes of Horus Heresy, Burning of Prospero. Once it's gone, it's gone. And they do not give a fuck if you need it, if it was essential to your hobby, your game, whatever. It's just gone. No support. And the worst thing is you don't know when it's going to happen. It just, it's gone one day. Uh, it's not like they say, four weeks from now, this item will be going on last chance to buy. So start saving now so you can get ready for it. 
No, it's just a fuck you in the ass. It's like when your car breaks down. It's just, you, you've got to cough up the money to pay for the repair right then and there. It doesn't matter what your excuse is. It's just, that's the situation. And it really sucks for people. I feel so sorry because not everyone is in the financial place where they can do such a thing as just dropping the kind of money these games cost. I mean, even if you're a diehard Games Workshop supporter, you've got to feel some empathy for people in this situation. Now, as sculpts, these kits are beautiful. I think they did such a great job with all the plastics for Adeptus Titanicus. But you're looking at one type of knight, two type of knight, three type of knight, three types of titan. Six miniatures for an entire game over one year. Six miniatures. We have so many different knights, so many different titans to pick from. Some of them use the same fucking bodies as existing Knights and Titans, they just haven't released parts for them to turn them into this different type of thing. The Acasus Knight Poryphon, for example. Its arms can be swapped out for a completely different Titan. Uh, let, let me look on Forge World's website, because I don't know the Knight off the top of my head. It's got Imperial Knights. There we go, the Acastus Knight Asterius. It's got the same legs, same torso, the upper carapace, shoulders, and gun arms are different. So, at least 50% identical model. You can't, you're saying they can't make an upgrade kit of some kind? What about the... So you've got the Night Lancer. Well, what about the Asheron? What about the Castigator? Both those knights are literally just arm swaps. And if you're really desperate, I suppose you could swap out shoulders and heads. But they're really just arm swaps for the existing Imperial Serastus Knight Lancers. So why is there not a sprue released in such a, a long period of time that allows you to do that? All I can think of is drawing this out over a super long period of time. Which is fucking pathetic. So this is why Titanicus draws a lot of ire from me, because it is not conducive to getting into the game easily. If you want to play this game, you've got to go and you've got to buy the Titanicus rule set, well there's a hundred bucks, and then you're like, well fuck, what knights do I buy? So unless you've had a couple of games under your belt and you understand, uh, you might buy the wrong knights or titans, you might not make the super competitive list. Uh, not very good, is it now? And of course you've got things like Titan Death, Doom of Moloch that you might need to try and expand on your forces. Not great. As far as the terrain and shit goes, nicely sculpted, but fuck it. Um, Dark Quest in the 41st millennium. Okay. While we're here, let's look at Blackstone Fortress and Warhammer Quest in general. Piss poor support. That's fine if it's going to be treated as a regular traditional board game. However, it is very, very expensive for a traditional board game. I don't know. That's probably my only gripe with it, but again, like the other versions of, say, Warhammer Quest, how long is it going to remain in production? Because Shadows of Hammer Hole is now the one. What happened to Silver Tower? Actually, I'm curious. What happens if I look for it? Oh, well, you can buy some rules for Silver Tower on uh, for free, it seems, on iOS or Android. That's it. Game's gone. I didn't even know this was the thing. I just remember Silver Tower was a thing. Um, so, yeah, if you want to play Warhammer Quest in the fantasy setting... Oh, you're right, girl. Um, this is it. This is your option. Shadows of a Hammer Hole. The miniatures are out there, I'm sure, but you're not going to get the game unless you go to some other third party. It's that piss poor thing again. Uh, actually, while we're here, another thing I want to talk about Warhammer Community. I've spoken about it before, but there's this real strong hype cycle that happens. And basically, in about four weeks leading up to a faction being released, usually a new faction, you get flooded with a pretty much daily update on said faction. Here is the new unit coming out. Here's how good it is. 
uh, and it's part of their marketing strategy. Again, nothing wrong with it. I just want to point it out. Okay, this is not me shitting on the company. I hate having to do a disclaimer here, but inevitably, again, that person will pop up in the comments saying you're so negative about everything. No, I'm just saying it how it is. They will bring out a new faction. That faction will get hyped the fuck up. There'll be painted tutorials on it, all the different things you can do with it, how to talk about how great it is. Again, respect it. It's marketing. Respect it as a strategy. They will then put said faction up against another faction in battle reports and such, and it naturally will do very well. Because part of selling you things is selling you power. If you buy this, you'll win games. So they go out and they do that. You, you start winning games with new faction. That's the idea. So they hype it up. And then they drip feed it to you, usually like a quick preview, a little video, something like that, where they just sort of half show you the miniatures, you know, usually like troops, uh, maybe some big HQ unit, and it's like, whoa, look how cool that thing is, it's so new and unique. Um, and then they sort of will show some elites units, and then finally, the last thing they generally show will be like the monsters in it, the big things for it might be like a dreadnought or a tank. Or it might be, say, a giant floating sky turtle, which is dumb. Uh, unless, of course, it has four elephants on its back holding up a flat disc of a world. That's totally cool. Anyway. Then, release happens. And while the release is happening, they'll still do some articles on it, but they slow down in momentum. Release finishes, and... Next release starts usually for a completely different game system so for example you will get age of sigma your next age of sigma release will probably be about six months time so what's going to fill that six months well we know a month either way is going to be the lead up to the game so it's five months that's got to be filled we also know that there's going to be the actual release cycle of said faction which will be over about four weeks because they don't release everything on day one they release sort of one or two units each week um, over about four weeks. So that leaves you with four months. So in that four months of content that has to be filled, the next army coming out is going to have its one month lead up and one month of releasing content. So two months total. And then there'll be another thing. So something like Age of Sigma 40k specials game. Age of Sigma 40k specials game. That's the six month cycle. Again, I'm not shitting on it. It's just, that's the release strategy. But it's very easy to see how people can be manipulated by the strategy. Because again, they go in, they see a cool model, they're told how good it is, and it's really pushed at them. How good is this? How good is this? How good is this? And then all of a sudden it's, forget that thing! How good is this? Just wanted to mention that. It's just the way it goes. Just as we scroll down, for example, look how much uh, stuff is in here for Beast Grave. Will a week go by without them mentioning it in some capacity? Beast Grave. Well, let's go down to the bottom here. Beast Grave. Beast Grave. Beast Grave, Beast Grave. Beast Grave. Beast Grave. And that's a special scan. Yeah. <laughs> it's just one box for a special scan. So that gives you an idea. And of course, that's how it works. And that's probably the least amount of articles I've seen. I think when I did my previous video on this, it was the Adonis Deepkin I looked at at the time. And it was something like 20 articles out of like 45 articles were on the Adon's Deepkin because that was what was being released. How often, for example, do you go on Warhammer Community and you see a section on something like, I don't know, Necrons? Hey, we're going to talk about Necrons for three days, about strategies, tactics, Necron battle reports, something like that. No, you don't see it because they're not what they're trying to sell this week. Just wanted to point it out. If they did more of that, I think I'd be a little bit more positively inclined towards the Warhammer community, or as it should just better be known, another part of the fucking advertising machine, as opposed to an actual thing for community engagement and use. 
Uh, and lastly, let's look at Forge World. Forge World is in the unenviable position of being the bottom bitch in the relationship, where essentially they have to look after getting all these specialist games out that Games Workshop sells and profits off, and they do it with a much, much smaller team. Now, they're further handicapped by having Tony Cottrell, who doesn't give a fuck about what's best for the community and only gives a fuck about his own personal pocket. Uh, I would love to say that in person to him. I will probably never get the opportunity. and If I did, I'd probably be fighting my way through the security um, at Warhammer World or something at one of their open days because essentially he's like, it doesn't make money, don't waste your time doing it. That's why things like FAQs take fucking forever. And of course, there's also, dare I say it, the fucking diversity hire in the editing department who is responsible for us fucking most of the FAQs. But that's a whole nother story that I don't want to get into here, and I've probably already said enough to get myself in a lot of trouble. But certain people in the background will know exactly who and what I'm talking about here. The way they're looking after their specialist games is piss poor, because frankly, their entire focus, in my opinion, should be finishing what they started. This game, The Horus Heresy. It's better than 40k. It's better than Age of Sigma. It's much better in general. It has a much higher level of quality hobbyists participating in it. it. Has a great background in history, but ever since the death of Alan Bly, the legacy is being shit on because they're not giving it the time of day it deserves. The attention deficit disorder of this company, which has been forced upon them by their management, is appalling. Get it done. Finish a fucking project, then move on to the next one. Because then if you stop supporting or whatever, we probably won't care. Because at least all the content is out for it. But instead, you're stringing us along. It's like having a girlfriend when you're 15 years old. And, you know, she doesn't want to have sex yet or something. That's fine. But, you know, every week she's working you up to it. And you're having long makeout sessions or something. And you're going home just feeling terrible. Guys right now in this chat probably know what I mean. There's probably a few girls who've been in the same situation too. Uh, they're just stringing you along and nothing's happening. Well, they're probably getting a free meal out of it. I mean, good for them. And hey, it's not always about sex, people. Uh, but yeah, just, just finish what you started. Come on. Is it that fucking hard? The release rate is fucking glacial at this point. And the releases you're getting now don't have any of the heart they used to. I mean, look at the fucking White Scars. Awesome Legion, one of my favourites, because I'm collecting the fuck out of them right now. Why is it the most elite unit in the whole fucking Legion is two sculpts? This guy on the left, and this guy on the right, and you just, you couldn't even be bothered to paint up six models to do your picture of a unit of just six models. You painted two of them, and then you just cut pasted the picture like fuck me the laziness there and I mean I'm not shitting on the quality of the sculpts as it were I'm not saying they're shit sculpts I'm saying they're lazy lazy uh, the white dwarf for I think it was last month or the month before fuck I, I need to put pictures of this up if I remember when I do the editing but you look in that white dwarf and you will see there's like a big apocalypse battle going on. Uh, the Primaris Marines versus the Chaos Black Legion forces. Have a look at the miniatures and they couldn't be fucked painting it up. They just cut pasted it. They cut pasted all the fucking miniatures. Like the level of ineptitude there because they didn't even do a good job of the cut pasting. And that's their professional team going out there trying to say, get into this hobby. Like, come on, laziness, people. Well, anyway, I've overstepped the mark plenty of times here again today. Um, a lot of bad analogies, rude analogies. Um, things like the being led on one. But fuck it. This is how real humans talk, so I'm not really ashamed about it. And everyone probably understood exactly what I was referring to as well. So fuck it. I win. Uh, thanks all for watching. Let me know what you think below. Uh, as I've said, there's there's so many good things they're doing, but there's so many shit things as well. And this is just the stuff I'm constantly looking at. And I couldn't decide if I wanted to make one video on one thing because I know if I'd put out a video saying this is all the shit stuff, 
the comments would just be, oh, you only ever see negative. And then if I put out a positive one, the comments would be, why are you being positive about it? So I can't win. So fuck it, I'll put it all into the one video and then you can let the negativity flow through the entire comment thread for all I care. Mac with the Outer Circle, thanks for watching and I'll see you all next.